Good afternoon, <coughs> Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Karen Eckel. I'm Assistant Attorney General in the Department of Justice. Uh, in the Criminal Bureau, um, and I'm here on behalf of the Attorney General who opposes the bill. The um, Attorney General opposes the bill because the current law is clear and uh, enforceable, and keeping the law clear is important because studies have shown that, particularly youth, uh, perception of harm and the, the uh, legal sanctions the perception that, that a person will suffer legal sanctions does influence the initial decision of some uh, adolescents to use marijuana in the first instance. Uh, we believe that decriminalization laws um, send a confusing message to um, adolescents about the legal status of marijuana. Decriminalizing a certain amount of, of possession and, and manufacture of a certain amount of marijuana uh, that is otherwise illegal to possess or sell in a larger amount is, is very difficult to understand, I think, and certainly from a law enforcement perspective, trying to ferret out decriminalization conduct, decriminalized conduct from criminalized conduct is, is made very, very difficult um, by uh, decriminalization laws particularly in the driving context, where under the current state of the law, the odor of marijuana alone is enough to justify further investigation um, into, into that criminal, potential criminal activity. Um, with a decriminalization scheme, that may very well change uh, the way officers can investigate uh, these crimes. It, there is a decision that was rendered recently in Massachusetts where Supreme Judicial Court found that because they had decriminalized um, a certain amount of marijuana, that the odor of marijuana uh, was in and of itself n not enough to justify um, getting those individuals um, out of the car. Um, so certainly it, it is a difficult concept to apply and enforce. Also, as we all know, it's a federal crime to possess marijuana in any amount, so anybody who's on federal property within our state would, would still be subject to um, criminal uh, sanctions. Um, and for instance, in a state park, and we have many, uh, would be subject to arrest um, by uh, law enforcement rangers. Um, another collateral consequence, if this is passed into law, um, it will preclude the state from filing uh, what we call um, juvenile petitions under RSA 169B uh, because marijuana possession in up to, less than, up to less than an ounce would no longer be considered a crime. And that would take those adolescents out of the, they would not qualify for otherwise uh, services under 169. Um, and they also, because the definition of Children in Need of Services has also been um, redefined to a narrower place. They would not qualify under CHINS either. So those young people would um, fall through the cracks. And it, I think studies have shown that the best time to intervene uh, with young people who are uh, committing crimes is to, uh, especially where alcohol or marijuana is involved, early intervention is the most effective. Uh, the bill is written also treats trafficking, selling, or recruiting minors to sell less than one ounce of marijuana also as a violation level offense. Um, and I think I already mentioned the difficulties that the officers would encounter in the field uh, in enforcing uh, this, this type of uh, scheme. And for these reasons, the Attorney General urges you to reject um, House Bill 1526. And I'm happy to answer any questions if I can. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you for your testimony today. I believe my friend, the representative from Clonkett, said the penalty for possession of one joint could be up to $25,000. Is that correct? Here in New Hampshire? Yeah, that's what I, and I've gone through the law book and I can't find it. Possession of marijuana is, is always a Class A misdemeanor no matter how many times, there's no subsequent uh, penalty or, or graduation of penalties. It's always 
um, a Class A misdemeanor, which would be a two thousand dollar fine maximum, and up to one year in jail. And up to one meal, up to oh, wow. one year in jail. But the law also permits uh, a prosecutor to uh, reduce a Class A to a Class B at any time. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, I have personally not communicated with other attorneys general. Yeah. So would like to say that there's, then there's been no outcry from the other attorney generals when they decriminalized as this bill possible? Outcry in what way? That this will somehow create the situation that you start with. Well, it, it may have occurred. I'm just not aware of it, Representative Grace. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Do you have written testimony? I do not. Thank I you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.